moving on to number seven, different strategy being asked for here. It's asking us to use equivalent fractions to compare the fractions in each pair. And just as um, a little reminder about equivalent fractions, that um, here's an example. Whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. One half is equal to three sixths. I multiply the numerator and the denominator by three. Um, another example using dividing. You can also divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. 5 fifteenths is equivalent to 1 third, and I proved that because I divided both the numerator and the denominator by 5. So let's start with the first one, 7a. I'm comparing 4 fifths and 6 tenths. And so what you want to do is you want to have a, the same denominator. We call it a common denominator. You want the same denominator for each. So that's the whole point of the equivalent uh, fraction strategy. Thinking all the way back to question number one, if two fractions have the same denominator, all you have to do is look at the numerators and decide which number is bigger. So we need the same denominator. You could get all fancy and try and think of a number that both 5 and 10 divide into and then do a whole lot of multiplying. Um, but to find the lowest common denominator, that is, what is the smallest number that they um, both could divide into? And in this case, I hope that you, um, first of all, realized that, uh, that it's tenths. So 6 tenths can stay exactly the same as it was. And 4 fifths, if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, then I will get tenths on the bottom and 8 on the top. Okay, And that was basically because I know that 5 multiplied by 2 equals 10. So now that we have two, um, really we've only made one equivalent fraction. We started with 4 fifths. The equivalent fraction is 8 tenths. And now we can compare 8 tenths and 6 tenths. They have the same denominator. So all we have to do is look at the numerators. And because 8 is greater than 6, uh, we know that 8 tenths is greater than 6 tenths. Okay, when you want to save your work, take a screenshot. Oh, I have to fix this letter E. There we go. Take a screenshot. Save that to my camera roll. And then tap cancel to make it um, ready to work on again. Okay, let's move on. We'll do B. We're comparing one fourth and two sixths. Now this is trickier than the previous one because four does not divide into six evenly. I can't multiply six by anything to make four. I can't multiply four by anything to make six. So I need to find a common denominator. They need to have um, the same denominator. So I'm going to think about uh, what is the smallest number that both 4 and 6 divide into. So a strategy for that is to do multiples. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 5 is 20, etc. I may not need any more than that. And then I do uh, multiples of 6, 6 times 1 is 6 times 2 is 12, times 3 is 18, times 4 is 24, times 5 is 30. So these are multiples. 
multiples of 4, multiples of 6. And then I look at those lists of numbers and try and find out, do they have a multiple that's the same? And they do. 12 is a multiple of 4. 12 is a multiple of 6. So now I know that I'm going to make an equivalent fraction for each one where the denominator is 12. So then I ask myself, what number do I multiply by 4 to make 12? And the answer is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. If I multiply the denominator by 3, I must multiply the denom uh, numerator by 3. So 1 quarter is equivalent to 3 twelfths. 2 sixths, I ask myself, what number do I multiply by 6 to get 12? The answer is 2. And if I multiply the denominator by 2, I have to multiply the numerator by 2. 2 sixths is equal to 4 twelfths. All of the things that I've written down, you should be showing. None of this should just stick in your head. You have to show your thinking at all times, and we've been doing that since the beginning of the school year. I kind of feel like I want to put a box around each of these because I don't want anybody to think uh, that I'm saying that 3 twelfths is equal to 4 twelfths. Um, okay, so now I can compare them and I know that 3 twelfths is less than 4 twelfths because 3 is less than 4. So if that's true, then 1 quarter, which is equivalent to 3 twelfths, is less than 2 sixths, which is equivalent to 4 twelfths. There we go. Okay, I hope that helps.